10 reasons why self-deliverance or self-deliverance prayers fail. Number one, the cause of any problem is in the cause. In other words, if you don't understand why and how the demon gain access or in route, then you cannot cure any problem. You don't understand the cause. The Bible says a cause causeless shall not come. In other words, there's always a reason for a curse. Number two, wrong doctrine. Especially the one that says that you can pray your way out of anything. Hey, this kind of thinking, this kind of doctrine, this kind of assertion or assumption, which is the lowest level of knowledge, does not consider that you can misfire prayer or pray the wrong prayer, what the Bible calls praying amiss. In other words, if you don't pray the right prayer, what I call targeted prayer, prayer with precision, laser sharp accuracy, when you miss the target, when you miss the diagnosis, when you miss the root cause of the problem, you will mistreat the same issue. In other words, if you have malaria and you are treating typhoid, the patient will die. So you cannot pray your way out of problem. You have to know what caused your problem in the first place before you address the root cause because the cure is in the root. Number three, inability to interpret or analyze your dreams. Your dreams are spiritual monitors. And if you don't know, analyze, decipher, decode, and interpret your dream properly, then you cannot be able to fire with precision, with laser sharp accuracy, and fire the target. Number four, this is amazing. Lack of firepower to dislodge and disconnect yourself from the demons. This is because a lot of people seeking for deliverance are not strong spiritually. Their spirit man is like bamboo, emaciated, anemic, malnourished. This is the case whereby people don't even have spiritual power. Before the Lord told us in Ephesians 6, to put on the whole armor of God. The first church was to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. To be strong in the Lord is to be strong in the word of God and the power of his might to be strong in the Holy Spirit, especially through prayer, praying also the word. So if you are not solid in the spirit, if you have not built your spiritual capacity, if you have not fortified your spirit man, if you have not sharpened your spiritual sensitivity in God, you are vulnerable to attacks. In fact, bullies love weakness. So if you are strong spiritually and you build a strong, formidable aura, the enemy cannot attack you. Even when he attacks you, it will be minimal. The recovery will be tremendous and you can enter into what is called God's untouchable, where he said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Now, not building your spiritual capacity is a big problem because I've seen that a lot of people that comes for deliverance are not strong spiritually. They are looking for somebody to help them. They are not willing to take responsibility for their spiritual life, for their spiritual destiny, for their spiritual strength or might that actually determine how you live the rest of your life, not just getting deliverance or freedom. Number five, misfiring deliverance prayers. And I can't not say this enough. You know, the Bible talks about the book of James that we can pray amiss. Number six, know that incomplete deliverance will always provoke spiritual attacks. In other words, if you are prescribed a deliverance by a man of God who is a prophet or an apostle, 
or even a deliverance minister, please make sure you complete the prescribed deliverance section. Otherwise, you are actually exposing yourself to attack. In fact, if you don't complete anything, it's as good as not even starting it. Whosoever shall offend in one point, and yet, or rather, whosoever shall, you know, be guilty in one point, and yet does everything, is guilty of all. Now, number six is on resolve issues of foundation and altars. And I can't say this enough, including ancestral limitations. So every demon is not created equal. Altars cannot go by just prayer or deliverance prayer or self-deliverance prayer or mass deliverance or even giving you prayer points or praying and fasting. This is the case whereby the Lord Jesus said, this one goeth not but by prayer and fasting. And what of if that demon has resisted, become recalcitrant and resistant to your prayers? What do you do? This is where you do a lot of altar work, go through foundation deliverance, as well as break free from ancestral covenants, ded evil dedications, transactions, debts, interactions, collaterals, and all the technicalities of demons so that you can be free to worship Jesus in covenant. Number seven. There are what is called ignorance or lack of revelation knowledge. Here, we are not just talking about deliverance by questionnaire, what we call the word encounter. What encounter is when you come for deliverance, the man of God or deliverance minister or deliverance worker or prayer minister or even pastor cannot ask you questions like souvenirs. You fill questionnaires and then from there, the man will make decision. But you see here, we want the power encounter more, whereby we rely on the person, the presence, and the power of the Holy Ghost to discern, to diagnose, decode, and do the deliverance himself. So we rely heavily on the spiritual gifts, not just the Holy Spirit as a gift, but the gifts of the Holy Spirit, like word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discernment of spirit, and the gift of prophecy. And the next one is doing deliverance. This is now number eight point doing deliverance on people who are not ready or willing to repent and dedicate their lives to god for the rest of their life journey a lot of people want their problem to be solved they don't want god they don't need god there's no way you can return maintain and sustain your deliverance without knowing jesus as lord and personal savior and attach yourself completely dedicate yourself and serve god for the rest of your life. If you decide to do that, you'll be free from demons forever. At least God becomes your father, your shield, your buckler, your protection, your barricade, your security, and your immunity. God bless you. Number nine. I can't say this enough. We are talking about the legality and technicality of the devil. No matter how you do deliverance, if you don't understand legal ground, legal right or authority, or doorways, what we call open doors, you will not understand that the devil is not just a liar. He's a lawyer. He's not just a scammer. He's a programmer. Now, legal right is what gives the enemy the authority to attack or to stay within or to harass or afflict, or attack. Now, when you take away the legal right, you deny the enemy of his authority to oppress you. Now, the legal ground are things that is on ground or in your life that give the demons the access to come in and neutralize your prayer on a legal ground. For instance, Jesus said, the prince of this world cometh, he has nothing in me. So if you have anything that belongs to the devil in your house, any relics, 
magazines, especially if they are in pornography or pornography, masturbation, sin of omission, sin of commission, loss of the eyes, loss of the flesh, the pride of life, even in your internet, anything that is defiling, contaminating, polluting, God is of pure eye than to behold iniquity. If you be praying prayer without repentance, without pleading the blood, it's not going to work. And also, those sins will open doors for further attacks and the demons will also invite others. We call it open door. You have to seal the open door. You have to seal the break in your armor. You have to seal the breach and the hedge before your prayer becomes powerful, precise, effective, and efficacious. Now, and that thing is that if you don't give people, this is number 10, if you don't give people instruction on how to maintain and retain their deliverance in order to sustain it and walk in light of their testimony and victory, then they will not know what to do. And remember, I always say that if you don't know what to do, you do the wrong thing or you do nothing. So we have to give them clear-cut instruction about what to do, how to build your, their human spirit, how to avoid sin, the kind of sin that makes the enemy come back, things like fear, lust, things like unforgiveness, sins like your thought life, especially think, stinking thinking, they all attract demons. So these are the sins that really bring the enemy, uh, the enemy in much more than anything else. And then another reason which is like a bonus. It's misfiring. I've said that before. Not just misfiring uh, 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 prayer, but dimensional prisons. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Dimensional prisons are regions of captivity where people are held on, especially by a strong man. The strong man has also strong room. He has a kind of warehouse uh, places that they store people's blessings, their children, their virtue, lock up their certificate, lock up their youth even lock of their life in other words people begin to develop shop life or even health so the things we see in the natural that we think are intangible in the spirit realm they are tangible things now another reason is confusing self-deliverance with hands-on one-on-one deliverance ministration by confronting the demon directly no doctor can cure himself no and also you need someone else with a higher power, a higher anointing, a higher grace or deliverance, grace to be precise, to dislodge, to disgrace, to dismantle, to destroy that demon and disconnect you totally and divorce you from them. Cut off the dedication, cut off the covenant, cut off the contact, cut off the contamination, reverse every of the curse and covenant and then make you walk in signs and wonder and breakthrough and retention of your deliverance so that you can walk in the light of your testimony. So these are the things that you need to maintain, retain your deliverance. And this is also why a lot of self-deliverance prayers or mass deliverance or sometimes corporate, what we call corporate deliverance fail. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye.